Good morning. Time for a morning edition of Mornings with Stanley. Stanley, I don't know he's, what's happening. He's just really interested in something that he hears something must be heard outside. So he might be leaving us pretty soon. In fact, I thought I was going to be starting this without him because I, um, he was outside. I don't know. Maybe my neighbors are moving in next door. My, no, the lady who lived there before she moved out about a week and a half ago, so I'm expecting new people to move in any day now. Anyway, I've got to get to the church. Today is the day that I, um, I'm i going to read the about George Fox. I think it's, I should know his first name. I think his, his last name was Fox. I think it was George. Um, he was a uh, um, the chaplain, one of the four chaplains on the SS Dorchester who died in World War II, and I'm going to read about him. And we're going to film that today in the sanctuary around noon. And I couldn't sleep tonight last night. <laughs> I've been stressing out about the doors at the church. We got new doors, and, and they're telling me that they work, and I'm telling them they don't work. And they and I think, think I kind of convinced them that they don't work because they're the panic bar, you know, panic bars on the doors. And... Um, they're saying, well, you, you use the Allen wrench and you, everything will work fine when you're inside and you use the Allen wrench and then the doors will swing open. Well, what if you want the doors to be locked, but you still want people to be able to get out? The doors wouldn't close. And I kept saying, it's not working. It's not working. And they said, well, they must not have fixed it right. And I'm just thinking, you didn't put it in right because why would they fix a door like that? And he, I don't think they could. I mean, I, I think they just weren't thinking because they... <clears throat> They just weren't thinking about what it's like to be in a church. Now, I'm, one, I'm up all night worried about it. And I don't know why. They're going to try and do something today to fix it. But I think they're fixing it the wrong way. I think they just didn't install it correctly. Because, okay. I mean, if it was a school, you know, go to a school and the doors are locked. <laughs> but everybody can get out. And when they come out, the doors will close and lock. And that won't have, that's not how it's working at St. Mark today. So, anyway... <laughs> Uh, so I, I just lose. I'm turning into my mother. I'm looking like more and more like my father, I think. My sister-in-law disagrees, but sometimes I'll disagree. It's not so much that I look like him, but I'll glance and I'll see him. See, <laughs> like, I'll see when I look in the mirror or something. Or Now with my hair really short, just like my dad used to keep it, it's like I'm seeing my dad more. But he wore glasses my entire life. I mean, since he was about five years old, he wore glasses. So, um... So I'm seeing more, as I get older, looking more like him. But um, anyway, I'm not sure what they're barking at. Hopefully, I'm not as concerned about them escaping anymore. But anyway, um, my mom used to worry all night long. <laughs> And I'm turning into my mother. <laughs> and I've been reading this since like I've been, you know, a few weeks, a few days ago, last week or so, I was reading about, um, you know, Jones would say, ask, what do you want to say to me? And he'd listen and then he'd start, and I'd do that. And it's just, just still end up not sleeping. <laughs> I have, you know, I have Alexa make sleep sound, play sleep sounds, rain, and I hear rain for an hour. And sometimes that helps me. And, or open headspace and they do would you like 10 minutes of sleep meditation or or soothing music and I usually pick the music and you sometimes it works and Stanley just is <laughs> the, fl the floor got cleaned really well yesterday I guess because it's slippery and he just slid right into his food bowl and so now he has food all over the living room the den so <laughs> He tends to eat it more, though, when it's on the floor <laughs> and in his bowl. He's back. I'm going to have to kick you out again, Stanley. <laughs> you know we're talking about you. You've got too much energy. This is not a good day for me not to give you a walk. I intended to give him a walk this morning, but I couldn't sleep last night. So I just kept changing my alarm from 6.30 to 7 and then snoozing for 10 minutes. And now I'm late for church. <laughs> but, oh well. That's the story of my life. Our scripture reading today comes from Ephesians chapter 5. And he picked, Jones picked um, verses 20 and 21, but that's in the middle of the sentence. But I'm going to um, go to, and it's still going to be in the middle of the sentence, but I like this part and I'm going to skip the, I guess I'll just start with verse 18. 
Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. As you sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now our reading today from Christian Maturity. This is Thursday of week 39. Take more. I love him so. We are considering that there is no self-seeking in love. Note that I do not say there is no self-love in love. There is, but it must be agape love for ourselves and ourselves for ourselves in God. While there is self-love in God, there is no self-seeking. That would pervert agape into eros, a self-seeking love. Here was a mother worrying over the possibility that some girl might come and take away her darling son, and worrying over the possibility that some young man might not come and take, her, take away her daughter. In both cases, she was worrying over herself. She was primarily thinking of herself, secondarily of her children. She was loving them with the wrong love, Eros love. She never surrenders him to God. Her needless and useless mourning is a species of self-pity. On the other hand, here was agape love. A boy gave his blood for his buddy. He gave the required amount. Then the doctor said, it is finished. You may go. No, said the boy. Take more. Take more. I love him so. He was thinking of this friend, not himself. Agape love. A mother stood up in one of our ashrams and said, Pray for me. I have difficulty in management, managing my husband and my children. Managing. A revealing word. We did pray for her. Prayed that she would cease to try to manage her husband and her children and love them for their own sakes. Then there would be no need to try to manage. Eric Fromm, the psychiatrist, defines love. Love is union with somebody or someone so, somebody or something outside of oneself under the condition of retaining the separateness and integrity of one's own self. And we may add, retaining the separateness and integrity of the other self. The mother mentioned above did not fulfill the latter. She wanted to make herself dominant to manage her husband and her children. She was quite immature, trying to appear mature. When we are fully surrendered to God, then we can and should love ourselves, love ourselves in God. And the self that we love is a lovable self, for it is on the right center with the right motives. Here's our prayer for today. O oh Jesus, your love never wears thin, for it is agape and always agape. Therefore, we grow in the wonder of it, glory in the beauty of it, surrender to the call of it, and long to be changed the channel of it. At the touch of your agape, we are at your feet. Amen. Our affirmation for the day, when I surrender myself, I am obeying the very law of my being. Hence, I am fulfilled. Jesus is Lord. <laughs>